Hey, humans. Uh, my name's Tom. I'm on the web at tdjacobs.com and also my second site, healingsuicide.com. And I want to do a video to talk about the effects of energy work through me, through my recordings. So I offer a number of uh, channeled energy work meditations. Uh, and on those, Ascended Master Jehudi or Hermes, yes, that Hermes, Thoth, St. Germain Merlin, talks and there's an energetic vibration there's a transfer of energy but on those energy work recordings i bring through my voice archangel metatron to do energy work so i want to talk about that you you're seeing this video because you're curious or you found it on my channel or because you're considering having energy work with me or you've had energy work with me and you're like what the heck Okay, so so no, I'm just going to talk about the energy work and what it does through me, my version of it, and also the effects. But also, if you're considering the 22 or 31, there are two different sets. The unique recordings, so there are 50, 53 total, and um, the 53 total, but they're in two sets. And um, a lot of people have used the 22 days and then have uh, found the 31 days also to have more variety. But but anyway, in one of those, at least one of those. Jehudi says, oh, yes, the channel has this um, uh, audio thing that describes this MP3 on his site that describes the effects of energy work. Somehow, through years of living, that MP3 is gone. I don't have it anymore. So um, I've had several requests to, to do that. So now I'm going to take this opportunity to do it. Um, so again, you might be considering having energy work with me, or you might be interested in the 22 days or 31 days sets. Um, the way that I, so let's talk about the 22 and 31 days first, and also the other MP3s on my site, like um, uh, Healing Trauma and Grief, or the um, Transforming series, where there are three transforming MP3s, uh, Transforming uh, Anxiety and Depression, transforming the effects of abuse and also um a third one i can't remember right now because it's like super early here <laughs> i just got up anyway so all the channeled energy work now if it says lecture from jehudi on my site it's just the teaching from him where there is some energy transfer but not the same it's the metatron jehudi together that makes a difference so when you listen to those mp3s you are allowing, you're, they're inviting on each MP3 to allow the energy in the channel's voice to reach you, to connect with you. And, and both of those beings focus on what's in your highest good. And the way that the Metatron, and Jehudi does that through teaching, through talking, explaining things, whatever it is we need to evolve, Jehudi will provide answers to our questions. Metatron, however, I think of it as he has he understands what your energy field or consciousness can look like when you're healthy when you have integrity when you have self-respect and his commitment involves to help you become uncomp uncompromisingly self-respecting to have unwavering integrity so that's about boundaries and self-respect that translates into the rest of your life. How it works in the energy work is, basically, this is the way I think of it, the way I've talked with him about it. You, whatever's going on in your third chakra, for example, the solar plexus, the belly, the self-empowerment uh, one, he understands, he knows, and he has a blueprint, so to speak, for what a third chakra should look like. What a healthy third chakra as a, as a baseline experience should look like. So then you have your life. You have the judgments, the self-judgments. You have the, um, if you feel guilty about something, if you're embarrassed about something, if you have shame, if you have self-regret or doubt, all those things have to do with the third chakra and many more. So what we do is on those meditation recordings, if you say, yes, I'm willing to let Metatron affect me. I'm willing to let that energy into my space. Then that energy comes in and starts kind of retooling what's going on in your third chakra. What's going on in your third chakra does not, if you're ready, if you're willing, it can't stay the same. 
So it's almost imposing the blueprint and then asking you during the recording for you to make decisions. I'm ready to be free of guilt or I'm ready to process through shame or something like that. I don't need to feel ashamed anymore. Some, something like that. They'll lead you through these, uh, these uh, affirmations during the recordings. Stuff in your third chakra starts to move. It's like co-opting a very positive high level vibration and then allowing garbage in your field to start to break up. Sometimes it's quick and massive. Sometimes it's slow and gradual. One of the reasons for making two sets of 20 minute meditations, in addition to those 90 minute transforming MP3s and the hour long, there are four hours of transforming or processing trauma and grief. Those things, those are free on YouTube, actually. You can look those up. My dealing with grief playlist on this channel. Um, but anyway, in 20 minute segments, those 22 and 31, those sets are 20 minutes a piece approximately, somewhere 21 or 22. But they're at least 20 minutes. Well, it's just you dip in over and over again. You put your toe in the water and then your foot and then your ankle. And it's a very comfortable process to not escalate, but to over and over again do a little. That's why I made those recordings. In 2014, they were live calls. I recorded them, they've been edited and um, for sound quality and, and issues. And then, um, yeah, so now they're available. So, okay, so there's that. But let me bring in something from Carolyn Mace, which it's almost a direct quote from Anatomy of the Spirit. And I'm sure it appears in other works of hers too. The physical body cannot help but conform to what's going on in your energy field. So when your energy field shifts, if you get rid of a bunch of guilt, for example, in the third chakra, you're going to have physical effects. Now with the 20 minute meditations, it's a little, if you do one every day, that's, that's great. You, you've had, I've had people say, I listen to five or six of them a day, plus other things, and it can be too much. So that's why we want you to have a gradual process where you're allowing the energy of Metatron and Judy to affect you every day, right? Or five days a week or whatever, but a little bit on a regular basis, you're going to notice some changes. So I just mentioned third chakra as an example, but I want you to realize, think about other chakras. And uh, I recommend you get the chakra course uh, where I teach everything that I've learned from humans and also Ascended Master Jehudi Hermes, Boss St. Germain. And that's available in two parts. Part one is the lower three chakras. Part two of the upper three, the upper four chakras, sorry. Um, the lower part is everything that I can tell you from Jehudi. The upper part is totally channeled. So you don't listen to the second part while you're driving or operating construction machinery or multitasking or something like that. Uh, the first part is fine. And the first part people listen to a lot because our lower chakras we really do have to deal with quite a lot. And it's a long-term process. And the way that Hermes Jehudi teaches all this is that we don't go up to become spiritual. We go down in our field to really establish the lower chakra grounding so that the upper chakras can open on a good foundation. This differs from a lot of teachings you'll encounter about the chakras, like we should go up. Judy says, you gotta go down because if you don't go down in your field and establish grounding and deal with lower chakra issues, you might risk becoming flighty or confused or ungrounded or undisciplined or directionless with if the, if the Six and seven chakras are open, you might not have a good foundation for them. So anyway, learn about the chakra system and understand those, those issues. And you'll understand like if, I, if, if you're, you know, listening to one of those MP3s and it focuses on the second chakra, we'll be aware of the organs and the body and the, the muscle parts and the part of the spine that relates to that. Okay. So chakra is chakra system is a good thing to know about to understand those effects. And the other thing is um, certain things can be in your body independent of the chakras. Like let's say that you're doing a root chakra thing in those recordings and you find your heart just relaxing open, right? Or you find your neck twitching and then relaxing. 
you know, or let's say you're working in the fifth chakra in those recordings and you feel your third chakra becoming warm or strong or something. It's possible that there are different things. So um, to know how those chakras relate to each other is important too. But also just what you feel, just what you feel in your body. Like, let's say that you come into a session with me and I say, well, that sounds like it's stuck in your second chakra, but you keep feeling it in your fifth or your fourth or your third or your first or your whatever. You know, you might experience energy stuck in your body in a different place. Like you might associate a certain problem in your life and have a, a physical place where you locate that energy, right? That's normal too. So there's no hard and fast rule of what will be affected, but just be aware of the chakra system, be aware of you know, your history in your life and your relationships and, and how things are going to affect you. I mean, where in the body or what kind of processes. And then think about the body's processes too, like digestion. Let's say that we're talking about an idea that's stuck in your head, six chakra, but it's actually after the energy work, you you have an increase or decrease in appetite or you have a gastric distress for a couple hours or a day, you know, processing things, digesting things. Think about that level of symbolism as well. Or what the liver does, what the kidneys do. Kidneys filter, right? The liver breaks down toxins, among other things. So think about all the, the organs too and how they function too. Now, if you do energy work with me live, I will endeavor as best I can, I'll try to remember, to um, tell you what you might expect given what we do in a certain session. <clears throat> and the, the energy work that I'm offering right now is focused in two main areas. One is remote sexual healing. Well, it's all remote. We do it over, over Zoom, over these webinars, and I connect with, with permission. I connect to your field and do the energy work. Um, and that's a series of four half-hour calls. And I'll put the link in the in the description of the video. And if you go to my site and it says temporarily unavailable, it's just because I'm taking a break or resting or stuff is going on in my world or my life or whatever. Um, I pers the, the new structure, I used to do it <laughs> like in a two hour call. We'd do like a half hour reading, talk about the issues, what do you wanna work on, where you're coming from, I get to know your guides, your field, your life history. And then we do the energy work for like 60, 70 minutes, and then we kind of cool down. And that was a, that structure wore me out. And so now it's in briefer segments, weekly or every other week, and it's much more effective. Um, I haven't really promoted it a lot because I wanted to make sure it's a good uh, system. It's a good setup for me before I do like a video like this and talk about it. And I've done this work with, I think, eight or nine people over the last, I want to say four or five months. I could be wrong about the, the, the duration of time. And it's going really well, and I'm really happy about it, and they're happy about it. So, uh, but anyway, if you do energy work with me in person, there's that focus. And also, the other focus is trauma. So, I say remote sexual healing of any issues self doubt, guilt, trauma, abusive stuff, molestation, whatever, rape, violence, whatever. Like, it's a very Plutonian workshop over here. So, whatever it is, we'll work on it, we'll help clear things, right? In half hour segments. It's very effective. The first one's a reading, so I get to know you. The next three are energy work. So in that case, um, you know, and then any trauma, I'm expanding that to any trauma, like accidents or abusive stuff of any kind or, um, yeah. So in that case, they, we can get very specific. Like, I will tell you something like, you know, at the end of it, like, let's say that, um, Just thinking about recent client experiences, a couple have had where we've taken away, like um, in one person, we removed the memory of being spanked as a child by an angry parent. Um, we might not think that's about sexuality, but it is. It is. It, it all relates and that affects a part of the body, et cetera. And there are other stuff in the client's story that, that was about sexuality. but. Um, and that person had jelly-like legs the next day and had to reacquaint or reestablish, right? Had to reestablish um, groundedness and 
her exercise routine. She just had to kind of like re, re, rebuild and be very conscious of how she was moving and using her body because the energy change in her body was like, whoa, what is this? It feels different. And then the muscles had to adjust muscles and connective tissues. Um, another person, we cleared some stuff that did have to do with sexual activity. And she um, reported a release for several hours from her psoas muscles, which store tension of all kinds. Uh, go ahead and look it up. It's P-S-A-O-S, psoas or psoas. I think it's psoas. Anyway, so, and, and she had a similar experience. I think she used yoga, she reported, to kind of like, I don't know, get a handle on it or reacclimate to, her, to being in her body in that way. So there are all kinds of different effects. But in that kind of case, we're talking about lower chakra stuff. Lower, I don't know if it's going to be in your, an opening in your hips or your knee or your psoas or a muscle or connective tissue or fascia. I don't know that necessarily, but I would put your attention on, we worked on your lower two chakras. And so here's what to expect, but somewhere between your feet and your belly button, there's this stuff that's going to happen. So, um, so think about the structure of the body. Think about how we, and learn, and learn about how your body works. Learn the language of your body. Learn you know, how that kink in your neck might relate to your relationship with a family member or kind of really get to know all those things. And then when we do energy work, um, I sp I'll share with you more specifics about how to, um, about how to do that. So um, the other level of thinking about this is alignment of bones. We think of, obviously bones are hard, but um, the connective tissue, the fascia, those adjustments are, are when those things are adjusted energetically and the physical response, there is some movement. So spinal alignment, um, hip, all that stuff about the hips and the knees and the ankles, um, elbows, shoulders, a lot about the hips and knees though, because a lot of the work I do is on lower chakras. But that sense of, um, you know, those things will move. Organs in the middle of your body are soft. So think about the contrast. So if we do a lot of third chakra, second chakra work, sometimes that increase or decrease in appetite, sometimes the indigestion, or if you're trying to, if your body's trying to purge energy, you might have a cough or acid reflux temporarily. Um, but anyway, the soft organs can be affected quite quickly, quite um, readily, right? Uh, same with the lungs, you know, you're breathing in and out. If you're trying to purge something that's trying to get out, you might have like temporarily some, um, you know, not lung issues, but you might have some discomfort or limited breathing or something like that. All these things are temporary, by the way. But when they come up, we have questions. Uh, recently, I heard from somebody I'm doing the, that work with, and um, what we're clearing, just talking about her lower chakras in the initial call, what came up through her guides and, and my intuition was some difficult stuff her parents had been through that she as a child absorbed the energy. So it wasn't about sexuality, but it was heavy stuff that she as a child absorbed. And so it's in her field in the lower chakras. And when we're children, first the root chakra is activated at birth. And then the, sixth, the second chakra, maybe at age six or seven, the third chakra a little later. So, so we have these kind of phases, right? And if your root chakra, that's all about needs, support, safety, family, clan, tribe, all that stuff, community, you know, if you're born in a family where there's heavy, difficult stuff from the past, you might have absorbed it. It's, it's totally common. So anyway, so in clearing that stuff, well, then she felt sick. And I can't remember exactly what it was. It could have been like a, like a, bacterial kind of thing like getting a cold or feeling sick um and then we did the second one and she was sick again but she didn't tell me after the first one she told me after the second one so she said hey is this that and i said yes uh stuff stirred up stuff is leaving and you're you're responding to this energy leaving so it's like a healing reaction like a herxheimer reaction uh, i think in new age circles we overuse that phrase i was looking it up a few months ago to see if i want to make sure i was using it correctly and um it's more serious than a lot of us use it but the idea is um herxheimer the idea is you get worse before you get better 
like if you cleanse and your body lets go of a bunch of garbage you don't need, you might have headaches, you might be sluggish, you might have attitude issues and impatience and whatever, and be exhausted. It's a similar kind of thing. You're having a healing reaction before the stuff is cleared. So I said to her, yes, definitely. And keep me updated, but we can moderate or water down the energy work knowing that you have such a strong reaction to it, right? So we, so people getting energy work, keep me updated as we go. Um, okay, so hard things in the body, soft things in the body. Um, also think about posture and structure because, you know, if you feel like a weight of something and you're, you know, hunkered down or hunched over, you might be putting pressure on soft organs. And then after we relieve things, everything might be different. Your posture might be different. So, so just think about all these different kinds of things that can be affected. But again, almost quoting Carolyn Mace, um, your physical body cannot help but conform to what's going on in your energy field. So um, there are so many different ideas to cover. Um, so I don't want to do like a three hour video on this, but I want to put your attention on the chakra system and different things for you to learn how your body has responded to stress or difficulty, pain or grief or loss or whatever, to understand where, to get to, get to know where your body stores emotions and anger and energy. And also what Jehudi would call learning the language of your body where you might have like a persistent issue, but you can learn what it symbolizes. And that's what working with me can be really great for too. Not even in the energy work, but just in consultations. Um, I'm kind of a medical, oh, I'm a medical intuitive. I just don't bill myself that way. I don't advertise that way. Um, because I get energy effects. I get interrelated things. I see the sources of things, but I don't know if the answer is vitamin D. I don't know if the answer is more uh, vitamin A. I don't, I don't get that level of information. So I don't really do the medical intuitive thing. But if you want to know the source of like, you know, this twitch, or I have another client who has a twitch in her eye and we've identified it's one part of her is kind of on guard dog duty. There's either a past life self or an inner kid or a spirit that part of her is reacting against. So we know when the eyes twitch, there's something to look at. Uh, for me, I've had uh, years ago, I had uh, difficult foot issues of various kinds, and it was a symbol of my root chakra loss of faith that I was not supported. It was pain from perceiving universe, life guides, God didn't support me. And so it became a trigger when it happened. I was like, oh, right. Well, my, I had a little problem with my foot. I'd be like, right. I need to work on being grounded and knowing that I'm safe and secure and that I'm always supported. And I don't really have those issues anymore. It took some years. Um, but anyway, so we have these triggers sometimes in our body. Or, you know, let's say you have a difficult uh, ongoing issue with a family member and the phone rings. When you see his name on the phone, your, your throat tightens a little or you get a tickle or you start sneezing. Your body's reacting. Your energy field is reacting. Your body can't help but conform to what's going on in your energy field. So anyway, there, there, there's literally endless possibilities with that. Um, and then also symbolism. I also have a thing with my shoulder right now, both shoulders, but mostly my left shoulder. And it's about the perception of responsibility and how much uh, perceived weight is on my shoulder. So we got to work on that, even that symbolism of that. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, check out the energy work options on my site and those energy work MP3s. Um, the, the 22 set, the 31 set, um, start with the 22. Then if you want more variety, or some people listen to them every day for months or years and want more variety. So you want 22, 31 or a total of 53. Um, and also those uh, transforming things, which I have currently as a bundle. Those three 90 minute transforming, um, the effects of abuse, anxiety and depression. Can't remember the third one right now still, um, but that one with a fourth one, which is the energy clearing event. Anyway, check out my site, check out the channel audio page and um, yeah, and learn the language of your body. Thanks for your time and energy. Take care. See me at uh, tdjacobs.com. And also you can read about the soul's journey on healingsuicide.com. Bye-bye.